God be the glory. So I just thank God, you know, for everybody that's here and what we and what God is getting ready to do. We had an awesome time last night, didn't we? The woman of God came forth and she did what she had to do. And God just moved in this place. You know, God is such a good God, everybody. I don't know about you all, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking for my miracle. Come on, somebody. I want my miracle to chase me down. Come on, somebody. But God got some work and he got some plans that he has for his people that are obedient to his word. And I'm so glad to know that I am an obedient kid. Amen. Because sometimes we don't want to do what God wants us to do. We get a little hard-headed. You know, we have to shake us up sometimes. You know, but I thank God for all that he's getting ready to do and what he has already done. Uh, Ministry-wise, being with the tribe of Judah and all of you, my sisters and brothers that are in Christ, I just give honor to God tonight, you know, that he brought us out this week. You know, I, I've really been having a good time, you know, because my spirit been a little low, you know, I got some things that are going on, but yet I'm still smiling, y'all. Amen. Amen. I, I'm still speaking the things that, that God had already so I know that thing is coming to pass because I'm standing on the word. I'm standing on his promises. He cannot lie. Amen. God is not a liar. He cannot lie. Because his word is sure enough to come to pass. And I am a believer that God is getting ready to do something for all of us because of our because of our pushing our way here. And I know sometimes when it gets hot outside, we don't want to come out. But I used to think back to the times when, you know, I'd be sitting out on the back porch and it'd be days like this, cooling down, and we got our little six pack, and we got all of this going on, talking, joking, and, and all that stuff. And I said, if we can't come out when it's time for the Lord, when we got to come and praise Him and give Him the praise, I give Him the praise because I thank God that He brought me from those days. Amen? Amen? All right now. All right, we're going to uh, I'm showing you this prayer. Asking you all that you just pray along with me. Amen. As we pray for America as a whole, as we pray for those that are sick and shut in, as we pray for our children, to those that are not saved, to get saved, as we pray for our family members, amen. Those that may be just outdoors, that may be homeless. We just pray right now, God, that you would just move upon the prayers of your people. God, we come to you at the end of the day, oh God, and we say thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you honor and we give you praise today, oh God. We thank you for your loving and your kindness, oh God, that you have extended to us, oh God. Lord, we lift your name up on high tonight, oh God, and we thank you for allowing us to be back here again tonight, oh God. That you may look upon your people, that you may... Uh, begin to just work in this in this neighborhood, oh God. And not only in this neighborhood, but other neighborhoods that are around the city and the town where the killings and the shootings and all these things that are going on. People are acting wild. They're going crazy, oh Lord. They don't know what to do, oh God. But we know, God, that you're looking down upon us, oh God. And your hand is up on us, oh God. Your protection is around us, oh God. Lord, we thank you, mighty God, for your love. We thank you for caring for us, oh God. But we didn't even care for ourselves, oh God. But you cared for us. And so, God, we thank you and we lift your name on high tonight, oh God. We ask that you bless each and every person that's here, that they would get what they came out to get tonight, oh God. Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, that you would move right now in a mighty way. Lord, on your ministries, oh God, on your pastors, oh God. On all of those, oh God, that are missing out on what you have in store for us, oh God. Lord, we just ask you that you open up the floodgates of heaven, oh God, and pour down the rain, oh God. Lord, we can smell the rain when it's coming, oh God. And that's when we know things are getting ready to change. Things are getting ready to move in the atmosphere, oh God. Lord, we ask that you motion us to be in position, oh God, to do what it is, God, that you have sent us out to do, oh God, as your children, as your saints, oh God, as your disciples, oh God. We ask that you give us the, the, the pathway, to God, to go on tonight, oh God. And even after this is over, oh God, that you shall not stop here, oh God. But that your word shall stand, O oh God, that ears may hear, eyes may see, 
the miracles, oh God, that you have in store today, oh God. Lord, I thank you, God. I lift your name up today for America today, oh God. Lord, we know that your hand is in this, oh God. We ask that you move every disease, every sign of a disease, oh God. Everything that the media is trying to put out, oh God. But God, we repeat that in the name of Jesus because your world, your people are healed, oh God. Lord, we know that you're able, oh God. We know that you're doing a work in us, oh God. We know, God, that even in this thing, oh God, that this too shall pass. And God, we thank you. God, we lift your name on high. Lord, there is none other like you, oh God. I lift our children up to you right now, oh God. Those that are saved, those that are even saved, oh God, that your hand oh God. Cover us, oh God, as we go throughout the earth and the world, oh God, teaching your people today, oh God. Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me hear somebody just say, thank you, Lord. 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 I can't get enough of telling God, thank you. Because I know that he saved a wretched soul like mine's huh? He didn't have to do it, but he did. But God, I'm thankful. I cry out, Abba, Abba, Father. Oh, which art in heaven, oh God. Lord, we give your name the praise. We thank you, God, for this being the God who you are today, oh God. Lord, we ask you that you bless all in the White House, all in the Senate office, as they're making these plans, as they're trying to decide on these bills, oh God. Lord, we know that your hand is up on it. We know that you are for your people, oh God. That you will not let us rest, oh God. That you will not let us rest until these things become God. And they become, oh God. As we continue to pray, oh God, that things will work in our favor, oh God. I claim victory tonight in all things, oh God. Victory tonight in all things, God. Victory tonight in all things, God. Victory tonight in your name, Jesus. We praise and we lift you up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Woo, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, woman of God. First lady, come on here. Thank you. Hallelujah, glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. We serve an awesome God, hallelujah. A God that can never fail, hallelujah. He can do exceedingly abundantly. Or say on tonight. Father God, we just thank you, God, on tonight, God. We thank you for what you have been doing all throughout these three night revival, God, that you have placed upon our hearts to do. Lord God, we thank you, God, for saving souls, God, because we know that you are in the saving soul business. And God, you declared upon your believers, oh God, that we shall go out into the highways, into the heavens and the highways and the highways, God, to compel men and women to come unto you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, so God, we call on the souls, God, from the north, south, the east, and the west, oh God, to flood this community, oh God, to flood into our churches, oh God, oh God, that every man, woman, boy, and child, father, they need to say, what must I do to be saved? And we, Lord God, you said if you be lifted up, God, you said that you would draw all men unto you, God. So God, as we lift you up tonight, God, as we give you praise, Father, as we magnify your name, God, as we glorify you tonight, oh God. Oh God, that heaven smile upon us today, oh God. Oh God, we just want to be pleasing in your sight, oh Lord God. How many of you all tonight just want to be pleasing? Tonight. Hallelujah. Lord God, we just want to be pleased in your sight, oh Lord God. Hallelujah. We want heaven to smile down on us, oh Lord God. Oh God, whatsoever we put our hands to do, hallelujah, God. We want to find ourselves doing it, oh God. Oh God, we just thank you right now, God. 
Father Junior is doing it. We've been doing it for three days, going strong, hallelujah. We thank God for Pastor Rose, our bishop, he's not coming in. Amen for First Lady Rose and his family, hallelujah. We thank God for them making it. Glory to God, we was praying for them on yesterday. They had a blowout. We thank God that someone was able to assist them, hallelujah, and that need. And that they're here tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we do thank God for them. His children. They're so talented. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank them for their sacrifice. Amen. For playing the instruments. Amen. Hallelujah. And being willing and obedient with joy to want to do it. You know, I sometimes try to ask those kids to do something and they grudgingly were doing it, not with them. Amen. How they get joy on playing the instrument. And that's a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. They're saving a lot of money, too. <laughs> Having talented kids like that. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. But at this time, hallelujah, we're going to put it back into the hands of Apostle. Let's receive him with a hearty amen. 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 How many of y'all know that God is an awesome God? He's a magnificent Savior. God is an excellent God. He's a God that doesn't make a mistake. We've been out here for we do not three own nights. copyrights to any music. Hallelujah. I repeat, and we do not own copyrights to any music. People's lives have been changed. Praise God. People have been blessed. Praise God, somebody. People have been. I mean, they have really been blessed. They try to come in, in, in that area right there. People have really, really been blessed. This community has been changed. To all of you all who are on Facebook, Elder Pusey page, on our page, I appreciate you all the tribe of Judah. God bless you for all the tribe of Judah Global. God bless you for all of you who are in New York. We appreciate you all praying for us. All the prayer warriors that's in the New York area that we pray together every day. You all on the lifeline every day. Let me say thank you for praying for us here in Chicago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, give God a hand clap of praise for them that's in New York. Hallelujah. And we are appreciative. I want you all to know that. We are appreciative. And we are looking forward to New York coming to Chicago real soon. Hallelujah. All of the ministers, all of the prayer warriors, you mothers of the church, uh, we looking forward to you all coming. Hallelujah. To, to Chicago, hallelujah. And we are so grateful that you all are willing to come and to fellowship with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're happy about it. We're excited about it. And we want to see y'all come. We, we're, we're, we're waiting for y'all to get here, hallelujah. And we can't uh, just, what they said, uh, uh, like five shut up in my mouth. <laughs> hallelujah. This is our third night. Hallelujah. And we're believing God for a miracle. We're believing God for miracles. Somebody need a miracle. Hallelujah. Somebody need a miracle. And, and, and I'm believing God to bless us, to give us that miracle that we need. Hallelujah. And I know that He's able. I know that He's willing. And I know that He can do it. I want you to believe God for your miracle tonight. Make room for him. Make room for God in your mind. Make room for God in your heart. Make room for God in your spirit. And prepare yourself for what God has for you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As our musicians get set up. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to Get ready to receive them shortly. We'll receive our bishop elect the protocol. He's going to leave us further in our service. 
on this evening. And then we're going to have a hallelujah good time today. I know y'all came to have a good time, right? Amen. Amen. I know I did. Hallelujah. I came to have a good time tonight. I thank God for the people who walk past and that has come in. Those who have come in and praised and worship. Those who have come in and, and, and asked for prayer. I just thank God for every single person. Hallelujah. God is an awesome God. How many of y'all believe that? Hallelujah. How many of y'all believe that God is an awesome God? Hallelujah. And I know that some of us have on our masks, so uh, I don't want people on Facebook to think we ain't got nobody out here, but, you know, uh, people got on their masks, y'all. You know, it's still social distancing, and we have to be careful. Hallelujah. So we, we, we want to make sure that we have our mask on. Amen. We want to make sure we have our mask on. Brother Joseph, if you don't have your mask on, we want you to sit towards the back. Hallelujah. Because we got some babies out here. Hallelujah. And we want to make sure that we have our mask on. Elder Sean, get his chair and put it a little bit back there by you. Hallelujah. J just get his chair and put it back there. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. And we are social distancing. For those of y'all who are on Facebook, we are social distancing. Hallelujah. You all have time to get here. We're 7940. 7940 South Ashley. Pastor Roe, let me know when you're ready. Hallelujah. So you can take us further and higher in our service. And we're going to have a good time. Y'all ready? You ready, Brother Drum? You ready, little prophet? I, I see you over there twisting something. You ready? All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God is awesome. Hallelujah. Up here. The mic's all ready. Come on. Please have Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you all have prayer requests, put them up on Facebook that we can be yes, praying with you now. Hallelujah. I will prepare for two so you. How many people know that if you just make room for God? How many people know that if you open up your heart to God, He is able to infiltrate you right now? And if you make room for Him, the Holy Ghost can come on in. The Bible says, hallelujah, don't you know that ye are the temple of God? How many people today want to make themselves the temple of the Holy Ghost right now? Hallelujah. Jesus, you're my number one. Pray, DJ. I will make room for you. I will prepare for two. So Some of you have gone all, all week, 
and you've given out all of yourself. Well, it's time for God to revive you, refresh you, re-anoint you, reinvent you, reinvigorate you. In the name of Jesus, some of you need restoration. Some of you ain't prepared for it. But God told me to tell you, tell that devil, move over. And make room for God. There's something about the name Jesus. When you call on the name Jesus, demons have got to flee. Can somebody say Jesus? Jesus! Jesus! The lily of the valley, Jesus. The bright and morning star. We need you. We need you. We want you. Down on Ashland. Down on 79th Street. We we need a shaking, Lord. Shake, shake, shake up the community. In the name of Jesus, somebody walking by needs you. Somebody driving by needs you. Somebody listening in their house needs you. Do it all, God. Heal the hungry. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. For the believer souls. Greater works than these. Shall we be? I plead 
the blood over this neighborhood. I plead the blood over these children. I plead the blood over these apostles. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. The blood, the blood. The blood that heals. The blood that Stop the blood. The blood of Jesus is against the devil. The blood of Jesus is against the enemy. The blood of Jesus is against warfare. The blood of Jesus is against gun violence. The blood of Jesus is against police brutality. The blood of Jesus is against the the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. We need the blood. Saturate us, Lord. Take care of us. Tear us down. We build us. We make us. We bind us. We bind us. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout yes. 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 Now clap those hands and raise it up, give God praise, come on, raise it. Took away our cattle. We would have cursed God and died. 
but I encourage you to do like Job did and hold on, hold on to God's unchanging hand. And once God moves in your life, say yes. Oh, we know that we make the devil mad when we praise. And, and I just can't get enough of praising God. And you see, hallelujah, y'all come on, let me pray for you before you leave here. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Uh, you come on, let me pray for you. Uh-huh. Don't you walk past without letting the Lord use you. Hallelujah. We got extra mass. We got extra mass. We got extra mass. Come on, come on, come on. Quickly, quickly, Jacob, move. We're going to get you a mask. Oh, you got a mask. Girl, you going to put that mask on? Let's pray for you. Yeah, he's going to help you. In the name of Jesus, you need healing tonight. And I just have to pray that God would move in your life. That the devil can no longer bound you by what you've been bound before. I plead the blood of Jesus over your life. I plead the blood of Jesus. Change right now. In the name of Jesus, it's got to flee from you. It can't hold you no more. I plead the blood of Jesus. Save Lord, I decree and declare that this house has been swept clean. But not only that, that you will occupy with your spirit now. In the name of Jesus, y'all shall Jesus, Jesus, root up and tear down anything that's not like you. Serve the Lord, serve the Lord to the place where she don't even know her. Jesus, that you don't want it no more. Lord, take the taste out of her 
mouth, takes a new thought out of a bloodstream. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal Lord, heal Lord, heal her in our body. In the name of Jesus, we bind up the devil, we curse it from the root, we send it back to the sender. We don't receive it, oh God, but stir it that she don't want it no more. Heal the affliction, heal the addiction right now. Of y'all before you go. Your best friend, your BFF for many years, right? Now, you know. Listen to what the Word of God says. The Word of God says, if you believe with your mouth, I'm sorry, if you believe in your heart, and confess with your mouth that Jesus died and God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Do you want to be saved tonight? Do you what's your name? Lamar, what's your name? Don't make us name you. Nick, we don't believe the word. Alright, Nicky, Nicky. I might not know your name, but he knows your name. That's our name. Nick. And if you want, I'm just messing with you. You want to be saved tonight, I want you to repeat after me. And say yes. Do you believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sake? Yes. 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 Do you believe that God raised him from the dead? Yes. Yes. Do you believe that God raised him from the dead? Yes. Yes. Do you believe that God raised him from the dead? Yes. Say, I believe. I believe. Then that's it. You're saved. Now clap your hands. The Bible says that you're saved. Yes. The word of God, which is true, the Holy Witch, 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 Witch says, you're saved. Yes. But now that you're saved, he, no, you, you got to speak those things. That means he had. Do you want to be saved today, sir? You are already saved. Listen to me, young lady. Now that you're saved, you got to be taught how to live holy so that God can fill you with the Holy Spirit. And I'm not one for forcing things on folks, but God told me to tell you that this church is open. Wednesday nights at 6.30, Sunday starting at 10 a.m. Apostle is here, and then I'm here. You come on in here, but we can teach you how to live holy. And I know there have been times where you've had a bad week, you've had a bad hour, you've had a bad day, you've had a bad year. But I'm speaking into your life that God can do it just like that. Come on, come on. Ain't no need for no one, two, three step, four step, twelve step. All it takes with God is one step. And he'll take the rest. So you get on down here to this church.
Come on, come on, come on, come on. And I just want you to be encouraged that not the street, the God heals. Every tear that you are crying in now is another tear painful to the collection of your feet. Come on, the Bible said that Jesus went. What makes you think that we can't go through what Jesus went through? Say it again. Mm -hmm. And Lazarus death. That's right. That's right. And when he came to get Lazarus out of the grave, three days on the fourth day, because he had to prove to everybody that it could be too late and I still could come and work a minute. Yes. Somebody told you that it was too late. But God said, even though man said it was too late, I still can work a miracle in your body if you just believe. Martha was mad with Jesus. She said, it's been four days, and he's stinking already. And they gave up on Lazarus. Right now, I'm telling death to loose you and let you go. You still got on your bandages. You still wrapped in grave clothes. But the Bible says, Joseph, come forth. Come forth in the name. Jesus comes. Heal, Lord. Heal in his body from the crown of his head down to the soles of his feet. Transform his liver. Transform his kidneys. Transform his circulatory system. In the name of Jesus Christ, we found out cancer. We curse it from the root. We found it up in the throat that the throat cord shall and the vocal cord shall. We turn unto him in the name of Jesus. Speak the holy word, sing the holy note, let our Lord cry in the name of Jesus. He come on and heal the Lord, heal the Lord, heal the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, clap your hands for his healing tonight. Come on, clap your hands for his healing tonight. Listen, the devil trying to take from you. He's trying to take them out. But you found your way down to the house of the Lord. Well, the devil can't take your man. Because it don't belong to him. Watch this. And because from now on, you're going to let that mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The devil don't want a mind that's rooted in Christ Jesus. And so since that mind is in you, the devil cannot take nothing from you. We cover all taken already and watch God build you up stronger than you ever been before. Y'all give God praise for his obedience to all the nights. Bless you. And now that you've been obedient to the Lord, God is going to be able to bless you like never before. You stay humble. You stay faithful. Our apostles stand back there. That's a good man. I know you're coming here because you want to be here. You believe it? Every night, every time we have service, every Wednesday at 6 30, and every Sunday at 10 a.m. But you know what? God can be that to you. You come on down. You make sure you talk to your pastor. You come on down. Now clap those hands and give God some praise. Come on, give them a round of praise, a round of praise. A lot of the time, we think that the focus on ministry is what we can get for ourselves. But we believe in God for what others can get right. because we're praising God for somebody else. Yeah. I remember the Apostle Christopher Ellis came by the church three years ago in November and we launched a revival called Praise God for Somebody Else's Miracle. And you know we found folks that found it hard to praise God for somebody else's blessing and for somebody else's miracle. Folks that hate in this city. It troubled me for days when a pastor's car had come up messed up. And I was worried every day about what they were going to do. But boy, did God blow his mind. And as much as God blew his mind, he blew my mind. 
is something when you can get happy about somebody else's stuff. Because then you know what God is next to all you be doing while you get happy for the life. I'm praising God because I'm next. I'm praising God because I'm next. Yes, sir. I'm praising God because I'm next. I'm praising God because I'm next. Here's the thing about God. When you have children, we've got ten of them. Hello, somebody. My wife and I can fix ten plates all at once. We have to fix those plates one at a time. And then we have to set those plates down at the table one at a time. And the Bible says that I prepare the table for you in the presence of your enemies. And although you see a pasta eating right now, God is fixing your plate. <laughs> God is fixing your plate. You getting ready to be next in line for your blessing. And I don't want any of you to leave here tonight not knowing what God is able to do. We all need prayer. I'm praying for family members right now. I'm praying for people that don't even know I'm praying for. Hello, somebody. Fasting for people that don't even know they do fasting for. And when the disciples brought the young man to Jesus Christ, his father said he's vexed with a deaf and dumb spirit. But Jesus said his dumb but not dead. Jesus said, when the disciples said, how come we can't get this spirit out of this young man? We tried fire. We've tried water. We even tried praying, but the spirit is just whipping his behind. And when the young man, when the father, this is wonderful what I preach on Father's Day, but I'm just gonna tell it now. When the father brought his son to Jesus. See, we can't just tell our children, go to Jesus. You better go get saved. You better go get right. No, the Bible says that he brought his son. Intercession. That's right. And he brought him yeah. to Jesus. Yeah. He just said, get your brother. Don't do it. Don't do it, son. Don't get do it. Get your brother out of here. We, we got go the point. Church. We got the point. We got the point. Don't do that, son. Don't do that again. He took him to Jesus. Now watch this. Like some of our kids, when the boy got in front of Jesus, the Bible said, the spirit saw that it was his last hurrah. And he began to tear that boy butt up until it was lightning until he was dead. That spirit whipped that boy so bad that people were like, mm -hmm, he dead now? Oh yeah, he dead. That spirit sure whipped his butt. Jesus said that he's not dead. Right. And Jesus told the disciples, this time, come out, but back, and fasted and prayed. Don't you know that Jesus fasted? It's so to the point where the devil took him up to an exceeding high mountain. And told him to throw yourself down. He said, command these stones be thrown into bread. And several other things he said to Jesus. We got to get our fasting life right. Keep going, son. We got to get our prayer life right. So that when people come off of the street, we can lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Not they will. Not they might. But they shall uh -huh, recover from all that they're going through. Well, since you got all this power, how come you can't lay hands on yourself and heal yourself? Because you got diabetes, uh-huh. Because you got neuropathy, uh-huh. The devil was like, you can't even feel your toes. I was like, uh-huh. He said, you got some real headaches. I said, uh-huh. You got herniated disc in your back. I said, uh-huh. And you got this and you got that. Why you can't lay hands on yourself and heal yourself? And I said, well, Paul had a thorn in his side. And the Bible says that Paul besought the Lord three times. And Paul, when he besought the Lord, the Lord said, My grace is sufficient for thee. And so if his grace was sufficient enough for Paul, then his grace is sufficient enough for me. See, sometimes God knew what you was doing and knew where you was. And sometimes he got to keep some stuff with you to remind you that if you go back, if you go back, what you'll be up against. Oh, come on, somebody. I used to drink a little something back in the day. Now with type 2 diabetes, if I was drinking what I was drinking then, I'd be dead. Oh, come on somebody. Come on somebody. In healing my mind, God healed my body. In healing my mind, God healed my body. Some stuff I know better than to do. Come on somebody. But it's all about giving it up to Jesus Christ. 
I don't even know what I should do not next. Being led by the Spirit of God is what we need to go back. And I thank Apostle for what he did was taking it to the street. We used to do a thing called Peter Revival, preaching in the alley. And people laugh at us. Well, we're preaching in the alley right now. If he won't come to church, church coming to you. Church faith, church faith. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come to you? Church faith. We're going to every corner in Inglewood. We're going to every block in Inglewood until somebody gets saved. Anybody agree with that? Y'all keep on wanting me to preach. That's no problem. Hallelujah. Listen. I'm going to see if I got a few minutes. Shall I go on, Apostle? Shall I go on and see if I got a few minutes? I don't got a word ready. I don't know what I should say. Let the Lord use you, God. You got to be on. I feel God tonight. <laughs> Spirit of God. What was we talking about? We were talking about the young boy. And when Jesus healed him out of his sickness. Now, I wrote a song many years ago and my daughter played it out on the piano. Do you know Jesus? And the reason why is because many folks have said many things about who they believe Jesus is and the capabilities of Jesus Christ. Now we know in John 3.16, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. For God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. We are church people have been in the process where we have condemned people unknowingly and knowingly. But the Bible says that he sent his son into the world not to condemn the world because the world was already condemned. So you have to understand that when we in, were in the book of Genesis and the Bible says that she ate of the fruit and gave to her husband that was with her and when he went into the fruit, we were condemned at that point. The Spirit of God had left Adam and he died a spiritual death in the Garden of Eden and so every man, woman, and child that was born afterwards up to that extent, their body was infected with the infection of sin. I hear that they talk about this coronavirus and how deadly the infection of the coronavirus was to mankind. And I remember it was early, I believe in 17 something, 100 and something, where there was a ship of sailors and they were on their way sailing back home. And on this ship of sailors, there was a disease that had taken place that had wiped out millions. I think it was about 25 million people had died from the bubonic plague. And this plague was so deadly that they quarantined the healthy and left the sick to die. You heard what I said? They quarantined the healthy folks. They left the sick to die. Just like the coronavirus, even though you did not have it, they told you to quarantine. And they left the sick out here to die. But although the bubonic plague was a very deadly virus, although the coronavirus was a very deadly virus, there's another virus that has infected mankind since the beginning of time. And that virus is known as the infection of sin. You get the infection of sin and you can't get rid of it on your own. And how many people know tonight that the infection of sin will do like the coronavirus and the bubonic plague? If you have it long enough, eventually it will kill you. Clap your hands and give God praise for wisdom tonight. So, if you look at the attributes of sin, you will understand that you were born into sin. Sin is not something that you would just have to have somebody transfer to you. The infection of sin was already on the scene. And just like the coronavirus, if somebody walked past you and breathed the wrong thing on you, you can contract the coronavirus just like you can contract that same sin. What do you mean, preacher? If somebody walked past you and they got the wrong spirit and you're not rid of them the Holy Ghost, if they got a perverted spirit, that spirit will jump off on you and now there's two perverted people together. You don't believe me? The Word of God tells you that the spirit that used to occupy a house, when he came back and found the house swept clean, he went and got seven more ugly, big, bad, and bold demons to come with him to react. 
occupied the house because the house wasn't filled with nothing. And that's some of our problem today. We've been wiped clean, but we ain't been filled with nothing. Oh, y'all don't want to say nothing to me. We've been wiped clean with the Spirit of God. We've been saved, but we don't want God to fill us like they did when they was in the upper room, just like Jesus did the disciples when he said, Receive you the Holy Ghost. I don't know what's wrong with them, them holy rollers. I don't know what's wrong with them people shouting and screaming. It don't take all that. How you know what it took? You don't know what we went through. When my son was three years old in the hospital dying, and we getting ready to bury him, you gonna tell me how to shout because God let him live and he's nine years old today? It don't take all of that. When I open my door and I'm holding my one-year-old son in my arms and a young boy then broke into my laundry room running from the police and when I opened the curtain he squeezed the trigger of the desert eagle but the gun didn't go off. You gonna tell me how to praise God? When my son that's on the organ now was in the hospital getting eye surgery, they said he would never see again and he would need this and need that. The boy see better than me, he don't even got on no glasses, but you gonna tell me how to praise God? But I was filled with the Holy Ghost. I was filled with the Spirit of God. And so the infection of sin couldn't stay in me. Because the Bible says that sin stinks in the nostrils of God. How do you know you're full of sin? Because I can smell it on you. I ain't talking about your body odor. I'm talking about the odor of your spirit. And some of us are looking down at our nose at other folk. Talking about how could you hold his hand when he's homeless? How could you hug them stinky people? But God had to straighten me up and said, you look just like them to me. He said on your best day, your righteousness is as a filthy rag. Somebody ever give God praise today. Leo in the house, Leo in the house. Come on, man. Put your hand on you. Be I know you're going to say what's up to me. All right, uh, I'll see you. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Leo, them summer flavors boys right there. They was in the middle of the street on a press protest a couple of weeks ago. So sin, two things cannot happen. Sin cannot be in a body with the Spirit of God. So either you're going to have God in you, or you're going to have sin in you. And this is what I understand. I'm now in your hand because I put my Holy Ghost down, baby, and I set you straight, and then I pick it back up again. Well, that's a fleshly thing because even since I've been saved for some years, I didn't want to tell some folks some things. Uh huh. Now, now, you know, preacher, he done, he done did this and he done did. First of all, why you keep on talking to me about your wife? Or your daughter. I don't want to know about your wife and your daughter because I'm not going to tell you about my wife and my daughters. Let's talk about godly things. And they keep going, well, you know, and this, and, and I want to stay in this. And it's not for you to understand. And some of these pastors will gossip more than the young ladies in the church. I said the young ladies because y'all are the cunning women. Uh huh. Y'all heard that. The young ladies in the church, they just talking and talking and talking about other preachers and this and that. The Bible lets you know that clicks and Aries are some things that don't belong in the church. Now when you go over to the book of, well, come on, Proverbs, come on, is it the 6th or 17th chapter? It says these seven things that the Lord hates. Yeah, six things, six things, thank you, that the Lord hates. Yea, seven of them is an abomination. And we think the only abomination is homosexuality. No, that's one of them. But it said lying tongues, those that sow discord among the brethren, feet that are swift to run to evil. Come on. That's some more things that God hates that are abominations. So you're sitting up talking about them because you saw them looking at a boy, but you divide the brethren. You lied. Every time there's a fight on Facebook or a fight, you running with your phone like, ooh, look at this. No, God hates that. And in order for us to be able to reach the people and pour them out of sin, we got to be living such an upright, open book life that when we call on the name of Jesus, because you got to know who he is, the heavens open up and God is able to answer your prayer. Give God praise for that. The Bible says, to know him is to love him. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, we got a certain group of people that stuck on what commandments to keep. 
And let me invent, well, let me inform you that there were more than 10. There are more than 10 commandments. And if you love God, you will keep his commandments. Here's another thing. How can you say you love God but can't even love the people that you see every day? Do you really know Jesus? Those of us that know Jesus know that even the thief on the cross, Jesus saved them. Those of us that know Jesus know that Pilate had put a sign over his head that said, King of the Jews, and they beat him up and they put a purple robe around him and they drove nails in his hand and nails in his feet and they pierced him in the side. They put a crown of thorns up on his head and they dragged him from judgment hall to judgment hall and they beat him with a cat of 30 or nine tails on his back. Jesus was scourged and they ripped flesh from his back and even while they did all of this, Jesus hung on the cross and said, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. <laughs> I say you tonight. I'm glad that he was you. Baby, let me tell you. You hit me one time with that whip. That's it. You said, well, what you want me to do, pilot? So now, what you want me? Okay. You said, what now, pilot? And even Peter. Come on. You was with Jesus. Who in the so-and-so you talking to? I don't know no Jesus. Come on, somebody. After Peter had saw what they did, he, he saw it. He didn't want no parts of it. But here's the thing about that. Even though we didn't see it, we took part in it. Do you know Jesus tonight? He hung, bled, and died. Let your sins be forgiven you. Do you know Jesus tonight? That he released the blood that you might be saved. Do you know Jesus tonight? It was about the ninth hour. And the Bible says that he dropped his head into the lock on the shoulder. And he said, it is finished. I don't know what you're going through tonight. But I come to tell you tonight. It is it is finished. Drug addiction. It is finished. Alcoholism. It is finished. Child abuse. It is finished. If you know Jesus, famine is finished. If you know Jesus, poverty is finished. If you know Jesus, stress is finished. If you know Jesus, prostitution. It's finished, not only from the prostitute, but for the judge. It's finished, it is finished. Jesus died, and when he died, he gave you access to the blood. But there's something else that Jesus did. The Bible says that he stopped by the head of the gates of hell, and he had to retrieve the keys for the church. So Jesus went to the gates and he knocked on the door. One of the devil walks looked through the people and he said, who is it? Jesus said, the king of glory, the ark turned around and he looked at the devil. The devil said to the ark, who's at the door? The ark said to Satan, the king of glory. The devil said, who? The ark opened the people, said, who do you say you is? The king of glory. The earth looked at the devil and he told the devil, he says he's the king of glory. The devil started shaking. Jesus knocked on the door and said, Lift up the hands. Oh, you gates. Even being lifted up, the everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. Who is? Who is? The king of glory. The Lord of God. He stepped in the hell, knocked the devil upside the head, and took the keys from the devil, shut down the devil to be locked away for a period of time. But before he went to heaven, Jesus said, I've got the keys, I've got the keys of heaven and the earth, and I've given the keys to the church. You've got a key. You got a peace. You got a peace. You got a peace. You got peace. You got peace. You got peace. You got peace. To open doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open. Y'all better get with me. But what do you do when you come to a door and you stick your 
This is a holy scripture. Come on in and celebrate Jesus tonight. I decree and declare that you will no longer lack tonight. I bind the spirit of lack today in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind the spirit of affliction today in the name of Jesus. I bind it up. I curse it at the root. I send it back to the sinner who don't receive it. But the blood of Jesus is against you today. The blood of Jesus is against the devil today. Somebody need Jesus.
uh, barbecuing down here. We can pass out a few care packages to uh, those who may be in need. Uh, we'll be down here from, uh, we don't get started about 10, but we're gonna pass out a few care packages from 11 to one. So we don't wanna take up your whole Saturday, but if you're free, by chance, come on down and be with us. Go to on Facebook, we're 7940 South Ashland, 7940 South Ashland. Come on out and fellowship with us, amen. Uh, as we begin to get ready to go home, I'm gonna bring our bishop back so he can dismiss us, but I want to make sure I made that announcement. If you are in need of a church home, we have two services here at the church. We have a 10 o'clock service from 10 to 12, and then we have a service from 12.30 until the Lord let them, hallelujah. And so we want you all to you know, come on out and be with us, you know, if you work um, on Sundays. This is this important Facebook. If you work and you want to serve God, you want a church home, you don't have one, please inbox me, Apostle Lamar Johnson. We will have service on Saturday. If you are on Saturday but you work on Sunday, we will have service on Saturday. Amen. You got people at church that work on Sunday and all they say is, oh, I wish I could go to church. I wish I could go to church. Please let them know that there's a church that's willing to have service on Saturday so that you all can get your weekly praise on and your worship in the house that bears God's name. We will come down on Saturday and we will start at 10 o'clock a.m. on Saturday so that it won't take up your whole day so that you can get all the things done that you didn't get done during the week. So if you work on Sunday, and but you want to go to church, you want to be in the Lord's service, and you feel bad every Sunday, I'm telling you, we will have service on Saturday. Amen. And we'll be faithful, and we will be consistent. So I wanted to put that out there. We are 7940 South Ashland, 7940. South Ashland, if that is you and you know you got friends that you work with on Sunday and y'all are always saying y'all would love to be in church, come out on Saturday and have service because Saturday is the Sabbath anyway. Hallelujah. Sunday is the first day of the week. Sunday is the day that he got up. But Saturday is the Sabbath. And the Lord said to observe the Sabbath and keep it holy. Amen. So if you all would like to come out, Come on out. We praise and thank God for Jesus. Also, let me say, I don't want nobody to be discouraged. No. I don't want nobody to be discouraged. Hallelujah. We have had a magnificent time. Those of you all on Facebook, listen, let me help y'all real quick. Don't get caught up in baptism. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus only. Don't get caught up in that. We had a pastor come out here today, and he said he was a pastor. And I, and I knew it was it was just something to try to get under my skin. And he asked, what was the name of the church? He said, well, what do y'all believe? I said, well, who are you? He said, I'm pastor so-and-so. I said, okay. I said, oh, where your church at? He said, out in Calumet City. I said, well, you're a Christian? He said, yeah. I said, well, we believe what you believe. First thing he said was, baptism in the name of Jesus only? I said baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I said, who is greater, Jesus or Peter? I'm going to let y'all think about that. He got mad and got in the car, but before he left, he said, in Jesus only. And when he got in the car with his wife, that's foolishness. That's an unlearned pastor. And whoever gave him his license need to be ashamed. Hallelujah. Because that's foolishness. So y'all on Facebook, y'all don't get caught up in that. Don't get caught up in that. Just come and serve the Lord. As long as you get baptized, that's what's important. Amen. Baptized Hallelujah. Under the blood. Hallelujah. So we thank and praise God for that. I want to let y'all know that on Facebook because I don't want y'all to be discouraged or thinking that there's a different type of teaching. But I did let him know, son, there's only one baptism. Amen. So we thank God for that. Let's receive our bishop back as he comes. Anybody need to get in the church to use the restroom? Elder Sean can open the door so you all can get in.
Let the church stay. According to the power that worketh in us, in Him I live, I move, and I have my being. Now, gracious Father, bless us as we leave this place, but not from Your presence. God, we bind up all flat tires, all engine and transmission failure, all speed camera violations, red light camera violation, all pullovers and police activity, gunplay and night play. God, take us to our desired destination. And bring those back here tomorrow to worship and on Sunday and continue blessing your people, oh God, that your spirit may now rest you and abide with them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that everyone say amen. 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 You may preach your name.